going in. Let's go in. I'm back. What's going on everybody? This is Sean of Raw Select Music and as you may have noticed by this new layout, I have moved. I'm in my new house and as a result, I actually have my own little room to shoot YouTube videos as well as record Raw Select radio shows. So the good news is it looks like, well, in theory, I should be able to start getting more content out to you guys at a much higher rate than I was doing before, assuming my motivation doesn't dip. But what this hopefully means is you You'll be seeing a lot more content from me in 2019. My goal is to start getting at least two videos up every week, but hopefully I can get even more than that up. And to kick things off, I figured since it's about that time of year as 2018 is coming to a close, I figured I would hit you with my top 10 favorite records of this year. Now last year I only did my top 5 and that was because I hadn't really listened to that much new music last year. But this year I actually ended up making a concerted effort to try to keep up with as much of the current releases that were coming out. I couldn't get to all of them, still haven't listened to Anderson Pack's new new record, Oxnard. I haven't listened to Julian Dine's new one, and I haven't listened to Detroit Swindles, and a whole host of other records. If there's anything that I talk about in this video that you think I missed, or you think I should check out, please let me know down in the comments. And as a result of trying to keep current with all the records that were coming out in 2018, I actually have quite a bit more than 10 records. So, as a result, I figured that there's still some records that didn't quite make the cut for my top 10, but I still thought that these records were noteworthy and I wanted to share them in this video here. So this is my honorable mentions for 2018. So with that being said, let's get into these guys. All right, I'm going to kick things off with a record that I think people like a lot more than I do, and that's Children of Zeus's Travel Light. I really like the singles from these guys. I also really like their The Story So Far EP. This one has some great moments on it. There are a lot of really good tracks. I really like the sound that Children of Zeus have been going for, but I still feel like throughout the multiple listens that I've done for this record, it still sags too much in the middle and actually makes it sort of a drag to listen to all the way through. That being said, there are still a ton of quality tracks on here. The album opens up really, really well with the first four songs being excellent, and it also ends up finishing on a high note. It's just that middle section of the record that drags it down a little bit too much for me. But all that being said, I still think there's a lot of promise with Children of Zeus, and I really look forward to hearing more of their sort of R&B, neo-soul infused UK hip-hop. I really like a lot of elements on this record. It just didn't fully come together as a album listen to me, but that being said, I can still recognize a quality album when I hear it, and I still think Children of Zeus Travel Light is an album worth listening to if you haven't checked it out. Sort of along the same lines, the next record up is Stimulator Jones, Exotic Worlds, and Masterful Treasures. This is a record when I did a review of it, I think I went a little bit harsh on it. And while still some of my criticism, uh, Stimulator Jones's music stands, I still find myself really enjoying this record. And actually, the more that I've listened to it throughout this year, I found that I really do enjoy this record a lot more than when I initially listened to it. I dig Stimulator Jones sort of mix of some modern hip hop and electronic music mixed in with some Quiet Storm 80s R&B. And I think he's a solid musician, shows a lot of promise, much like Children of Zeus. And there are, and there are, and there are still a lot of songs on here that I really, really like. Give My All, Sweet Love, Tempt Me With Your Love, and my favorite, Suit Never Comes, as well as as the delightfully cheesy Need Your Body. I love that track. And overall, while I don't think I've fully come around on this album for it to make it into my top 10, I still think it's a noteworthy release. And if you have not checked out Stimulator Jones, Exotic Worlds, and Masterful Treasures, definitely give this a listen. So continuing on with records that I thought were good, but ultimately pretty flawed, we have Kamal Williams' The Return, an album with a lot of promise, a lot of really great ideas that's in desperate need of a third party to
to help them edit down their ideas or give them direction. There's some really cool tracks on here. I really like the track Salam. I really like Medina, LDM Shuffle, and especially like the closer because I think it points to what could be a very exciting direction for Kamal Williams and Co. I really like the uh, sort of Blade Runner Evangelies synthscape outro of a track for this album. Ultimately, I still, my criticisms of these songs being a bit aimless and ultimately going nowhere still stands, but that still doesn't get in the way of the fact that this is still ultimately a really good album, still a lot of interesting ideas on it, and definitely worth taking a listen. So if you haven't checked out Kamal Williams' The Return, not my favorite modern jazz record of this year, but still a solid release nonetheless. All right, next up we got Bacal Rhythm and Steel Band, The Serpent's Mouth, album I was really looking forward to since I really like Bacal Rhythm and Steel Band's previous album, 55, which I did a review for. Um, 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 um. I don't really have a whole lot to say about this. Bacal Rhythm and Steel Band has some of the best grooves and best drums and I still haven't really gotten sick of their whole steel pan shtick that they've been doing. And I think the only reason this record didn't end up on my list, I think maybe it's just a little bit too similar to their previous work. But that's a minor criticism because I basically got exactly what I wanted from this. Tons of funky grooves, steel pan, some fun arrangements. It's a really fun record to listen to. And overall, if you haven't checked this one out and you're a big fan of sort of unique and original covers of classic hip-hop and R&B tracks, definitely check out Bacow Rhythm and Steel Band, The Serpent's Mouth. All right, moving into a record that actually I really wanted to do a review for, but just never got around to it. We got Cap Kendrick's Keepsakes, released on Melting Pot Music. The best and laziest way that I can describe Cap Kendrick's music is he's sort of Betty, 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 Betty Ford Boys light, and I'm perfectly okay with that because I love Betty Ford Boys. I think they've put out some of the best best instrumental hip hop there is. And Cap Kendricks does a really good job of doing that sort of sound. So there's bits of classic hip hop samples that you easily recognize with little bits of G-Funk and some J Dilla-esque drum beats. Cap Kendricks is a very solid producer, has some great drums, some great grooves, definitely one of the harder hitting instrumental hip hop records that I heard this year. And overall, I definitely recommend this record, I think it's a very solid record that just needs a few more unique and original points to sort of elevate it to the next level. But it didn't take too much away from my enjoyment of this record. And if you haven't listened to this, some good solid instrumental hip hop. Then continuing on with instrumental hip hop, but this time moving over to Japan, we've got Yotaro Mezzanine, another record that I wanted to review that I never got around to. And Yotaro is a very, very solid beat maker. Uh, he seems to favor a lot of the sort of digital sounds of the SP-404, but there's a sort of certain grittiness to his sound that I really, really like. I love the very hazy, smoky atmosphere on here. As a beat maker, I think he's absolutely solid. I think this record is just missing, much like the Cap Kendricks record, some unique selling points to really elevate it to the next level. But as an entry point, point into the world of Japanese beat makers. Yotaro is a very good place to start as he has collaborated with a lot of different beat makers in Japan. And overall, it's a still a solid listen as long as you're going into this record with not being expected to be blown away, but just to hear some really good instrumental hip hop. So yeah, Yotaro, Mezzanine, Jazzy Sport Records, great record to start off your Japanese instrumental hip pop slash beat maker music collection. Then finally, the last record, the last record in my honorable mentions list is a record that I really thought was gonna end up in my top 10 for the year, and it just barely got edged out by some other records. And that record is DJM Trio, Cave Art 2. I'm a sucker for covers when they're tracks that normally you wouldn't hear get covered. So the fact that Jay Dilla gets covered not once, but twice on here is already 
be a pretty good selling point for me. But the fact that they pull it off so well and really get the vibe of each one of the songs that they cover on here really makes this an impressive release. I really like the way that they use a lot of sort of more electronic, more almost video gamey synth sounds as well as there's definitely some roads on here. I love the bass on here and the drummer definitely deserves a lot of credit because he really nails that sort of modern beat maker sort of drum sound that pretty much is ubiquitous everywhere. And these guys honestly did an excellent job with the source material on here. So many great moments, particularly their cover of Treese Russian's Forget Me Nots is absolutely fantastic, as well as the aforementioned Dilla cover tracks, the Legend of Zelda Wind Waker cover, as well as Mad Villain also getting covers on here. I think the only reason this record got etched out of my top 10 is there are just a few records that I liked a little bit more than this one, but, 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 if I could have a top 11 albums of the year, this totally would have made it on there. And this record absolutely comes highly recommended. So that's gonna be it for me today, guys. Thanks as always for watching. As usual, if you wanna check these records out, please go over to my WordPress or Steam It Blogs link is always in the description. And that's where I post the audio links for any of the records that I talk about. If you've listened to any of the records that I talked about, let me know what you thought about my selections. Would love to hear what you guys thought was top 10 worthy for this year. And as always, please head over to my Mixcloud account because that's where you can check out Raw Select Radio. Link to that also in the description. Please check that out as you get to hear a lot of the records that I talk about, not only on my YouTube channel, but also some of the other records that are in my record collection that maybe I don't get a chance to talk about here. But that's gonna be it for me today, guys. Next video will be my top 10 through six records of 2018. So until then, catch you guys then. Peace out.